Now, turn the page over, chapter 49. This is where uh, the, the battle really gets ugly because Amalekiah is now on the Lamanite throne, and he is angry and bitter, and he wants that Nephite throne, he wants those Nephites to become his servants, his slaves more than anything. Look at verse 6. Now the leaders of the Lamanites had supposed, because of the greatness of their numbers, yea, they supposed that they should be privileged to come upon them as they had hitherto done, yea, and they had also prepared themselves with shields and with breastplates, and they had also prepared themselves with garments of skin, very thick garments to cover their nakedness. My goodness. The devil learns from his past failures here in this context using the, these, these armies of the Lamanites, last time they showed up for war, they're huge in numbers, but they're only wearing loinskins. This time, he says, last time they had the advantage over us because of their personal protective armor and clothing. So, this much larger Lamanite army compared to the Nephite army is now armed the same as they. Now we've got them, and Amalekiah sends them off to battle. The problem is, look at verse 10. Now if King Amalekiah had come down out of the land of Nephi at the head of his army, perhaps he would have caused the Lamanites to have attacked the Nephites of the city of Ammonihah, for behold, he did not care for the blood of his people. Let's just say it. He doesn't care. They're not really his people anyway. They're just pawns for him. They're minions for him to be able to accomplish his own designs. Because what's happened? He sent them up to Ammonihah. Do you remember what happened last time a Lamanite army went to Ammonihah? Back in Alma chapter 16? They wiped out the city in one day. It's kind of up on the north. And so he's like, hey, go up there. But he didn't go with them. And they came out and they noticed that Captain Moroni doesn't just have the personal armor on his soldiers, but now he's taken the cities and he's built mounds of dirt with trenches in front all the way around to make them more defensible. And they're like, oh no, our personal armor isn't helping us much when they've got the high ground and we've, we've got this low ground trench that we're going to have to work through. This is awful. So they back into the wilderness and say, hmm, what are we going to do? Ammonihah fell easily last time. It's not fallen today. And the chief captains of that Lamanite army said, let's take an oath that we're going to go to Noah the city of Noah, and we'll attack that city regardless of what it looks like. That's a silly oath to take, by the way. Unfortunately for them, Noah was more defended than Ammonihah had been. But they made the oath. We've given our word. So off they go to fight. This is the single worst battle, as far as ratio is concerned, in the entire Book of Mormon chapter 49, verse 23. Thus the Nephites had all power over their enemies, and thus the Lamanites did attempt to destroy the Nephites until their chief captains were all slain, yea, and more than a thousand of the Lamanites were slain. While on the other hand, there was not a single soul of the Nephites which was slain. Over a thousand to zero. Worst battle ever. These guys come home, this army comes home back to the land of Nephi, and you can picture so we need to pause here. We're no longer just talking about uh, random numbers and people. These are real human beings who aren't coming home, over a thousand of them. Can you picture the Lamanite families, the wives, the children, the mothers, the fathers, the grandmas and grandpas watching the army come home and looking for their loved one and he's not there and they ask somebody, hey, where's so-and-so? And they're like, he's never coming home. These are real people and they went to fight a war for one guy, for his purposes, and they're never coming home. You would expect that one guy to say, oh, my people, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry that happened. But here's what they got instead. Look at verse 26. It came to pass that he was exceedingly angry with his people because he had not obtained his desire over the Nephites. He had not subjected them to the yoke of bondage. Yea, he was exceedingly wroth, and he did curse God and also Moroni, swearing with an oath that he would drink his blood, and this because Moroni had kept the commandments of God in preparing for the safety of his people. Brothers and sisters, you don't need to be afraid 
of what the devil claims to be able to do. Don't fear the devil. Have faith in God. Trust Christ. Follow Jesus. And then you don't need to worry about all of the rash oaths and, and promises that the, the devil and his followers are making concerning you. Just stick with Christ.